we can with 100% confidence take our hands off and say, Jesus, hands on. That's all yours. You take care of that. And I will praise you in the beginning all the way through and rejoice in the end. Amen? He's an all-powerful God able to do all things. So if you have something that you're wondering about today, as always, just surrender it to him and allow him to have his perfect way. His plan is always better. Jesus, we worship you. We thank you for allowing us to be in your house. We thank you that you are a prayer answering God, that you are in control. You're our healer, our way maker, Jesus. And we want to give you everything today. We want to put everything aside that's happening after service this week and the months ahead, God. And we want to focus on you because you have a plan for this service, God. And we want to be in unison with you, God. We want to be in unity with you. We want to flow with you, Jesus. Praise God. Let your will be accomplished in this house. In Jesus' name. We seek you, Jesus. We want your will in this house today. Amen. The more I seek you, Thank you. 
okay, now this is it. Let's handle this. Let's let let's let this be settled. Don't go back to it. We've got to stop entertaining things that trip us up. We've got to stop entertaining spirits, fleshly spirits. Flesh, you know, we talk about woo spirits. Fleshly spirits can mess us up big time. So our prayer today should be God, whatever it is, whether I see it or I don't. If there's something I need to see in your house today that I am blind to, I'm asking that you open my eyes to it. If I'm going and participating in things that I shouldn't, open my eyes to it. If that's getting in my way, and when I'm saying, God, I can't hear you, I can't hear your voice, it's because I'm hearing all of the, the other voices I'm entertaining, then God, show it to me and give me the strength. He understands it's not easy. You are just 
Because for those of you that are newer to Spirit of Grace Church, and anybody that watches this online that's in church leadership, we may not do it right, my wife and I, but it's the way we've decided to do it a long time ago. And that is simply, we don't talk about the service beforehand. I don't know the songs that she chooses, and she doesn't know what I'm preaching. My son tries to get it out of me every week, and I give him some slight, sly remark, you know. What are you preaching today, Dad? Well, the Bible. <laughs> what are you preaching on today, Dad? The platform. We just don't talk about it. Well, she just preached my whole message today. So I'm not sure exactly what to do yet, because I know God's not done yet today. But she literally, almost word for word, just preached my message Oh, of what on. God gave me last night So he's doing something He's not done yet I'm just kind of flowing in the spirit right now Trying to figure out which direction to go Because I want to follow him Yeah. And he's speaking to somebody today He's speaking to all of us And uh, So I, I told Owen I said don't post my title Online because I'm not preaching my title Because she already preached it Let me, let me go this direction. I made a statement last week, and because of the computer, it didn't record, so it wasn't out in the out on, on the airwaves. But I felt last Sunday that God began something in us as a corporate church a couple of weeks ago. And we have entered into, for lack of a better term, a spiritual boot camp. We're into something that is going to trigger a mighty, it's going to blow our minds. There's going to be so many people that are going to want to come to the Lord before the end of 2021. And it, it's, it's, it's been a trickle. Now, for those of you that have been around Spirit of Grace Church, the trickle seems pretty strong right now, but we haven't seen anything yet. There is, God is expanding his territory and he's using people of this church to do so. God has raised up people to step into enemy territory, whether it be through intercession, 
whether it be through physical operation, whether it be through sharing the gospel, whether it be to meeting daily needs. It's all kinds of things. One of the ministries that we support is Dave Johnson and Lost Sheep of Minnesota. And he just, this last week, he shared it yesterday, and I'm sorry if I'm taking his thunder, but uh, he, he shared with the men yesterday, this, this last week, right out here in the vestibule, his board on his CO13, the Lost Sheep, uh, approved 21 people yeah. to join him in doing what he does. Now, I wasn't very good at math, but from one to 21 is a pretty big jump. And when Saul did his thousands and David did his 10,000s, what's going to happen when David has 21? Yes. And they all may never come to Spirit of Grace Church. That's not the point. As we plant seeds in the world, Jesus sends the people that are supposed to be here. It's not about, I'm done. I, I, we gave this up a long time ago. We're not in the business of trying to get people to come to our church. We're trying to get people to come to Jesus. And Jesus will send the right people to our church. And he has and will continue to do so. So we're going to, through Dave and his ministry, this is just one ministry of this church, is going to be reaching all over the upper Midwest. And God is going to touch people's lives. And you may say, well, they're just working on trying to get people into different treatment facilities. Yeah, but just that moment in the presence of one of God's children, the spirit is reflected into that life. And you don't know how much of a reflection that will be. We are in a preparation season. Now, I want to say that again. We are in a season of preparation. As great as it has been the last couple Sundays and as great as it was here today already, this is just prep. This is just a preparation for, and, and I declared to you yesterday or last week, and if you weren't here, I'm sorry, but I'm not putting this one out on the airwaves, but I know the weekend that there's going to be a culmination that doesn't end, but it's going to end our preparation and propel us into that next great thing. I already know the weekend. I'm looking forward to it. I announced it last Sunday. I'm not doing it today. You'll have to ask me afterward because I'm not putting it out on the airwaves. But I know when it's coming. And, and those that were here yes, last week will, will remember as well. God, for whatever reason, is choosing this church. And I think it's because we are hungry for people to come into contact with him. We are not a religious organization. We are an organization of relationship. I don't care about all of the rites and the rituals and all of those kinds of things. I believe, are you in contact with him? And I believe that we're heading that direction. And what Trish preached already today, I'm going to follow up on as the means of preparing us. Can you just, I was a hockey player. Okay. Now I know that most hockey players aren't supposed to be very smart, but but I mean, who wants to take a puck in the face or an elbow to the nose? And and, and and but that's just the way it is. But here's one thing that I do know is this: scrimmages were never as exciting as the real thing. They were fun, but they weren't the real thing. And a regular season game was nothing compared to the playoffs or a tournament. There was another level. Can I just tell you that we've been in the scrimmage season right now? And if that's what this is, if scrimmage is this, can you imagine what happens when we get into the tournament level stuff? Uh, God's getting ready to, to blow our mind. We're not going to be able to contain it. It's going to, the scripture that sells, says, pressed down, shaken together and running over is getting ready to happen. It's already starting, but we're just in the prep mode. Revelation chapter three, I'm reading from verse number eight. It's to the church in Philadelphia. And, it, and, and I'm taking a principle out of here that I, I just feel it's timely for us. Jesus is talking here and he says, I know all the things you do. He said again, he knows everything you do. 
the good, the bad, and the ugly. He knows it. And because he knows all the things you do, he says, I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. Look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are the Jews but are not, to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones that I love. Now, I believe that some of that is a prophetic in the future kind of thing. But we can draw principles from the word of God. I believe that we are standing on the threshold of a move of God. Listen, we have prayed and prayed and we've talked about it for years that we wanted to be a modern day Azusa Street revival. I believe God is preparing us and ramping us up to that. Not because we're something special, but because we're hungry and thirsty and we're trying to figure out what moves God to touch other people. And, and I believe that we are standing at an opportunity to do something for God that will go down if time should continue in history as a great move of the Lord. Can I just tell you there is something that is stirring in the spirit of the church, in the kingdom of God that says it's not going to just be church as usual. Don't come to a Sunday service just expecting, again, a couple of choruses and a message, but come expecting God to step into your world and begin to speak to you and to move on you and to change you and to transform you. Something is happening that's incredibly powerful. Second Corinthians, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 16 and verse number 9 says this. This is Paul talking. There is a wide open door for a great work here, although many oppose me. We're standing in front. Jesus said I have a door. Paul said there's a door. Paul said there's an enemy that's trying to come against us. Listen, there's all kinds of things that are trying to hinder us. There's all kinds of obstacles that are trying to get into our way. There's all kinds of attitudes and situations and people and job. Listen, some of you have dealt with job issues. I'm, I'm taking everybody's testimony. Bradley shared with us yesterday that he had to take a job a couple of weeks ago. He came to me and he said, Pastor, I'm not going to be in church probably till September. And in my mind, I'm going, oh, no, you're not. <laughs> I said, in my spirit, I never told him this. I said, God's doing too much in you to take you out of. And when he's being taken out of, it's a way and a means to get you into a permanent position to have the most effect for the kingdom of God. And so Bradley has missed the last couple Sundays. And some of you have even wondered where Bradley's been. Well, I'll tell you where he's been. He's been working. And he's, been, and he's been working because his hours shifted and he knew it was kind of a temporary deal. But this week, if you haven't noticed, he's here today because the Lord opened up a different door and a different job for him to step into. And now he's able to be back in church. Why do I say that? I'll say it this way. There are things that are piling up in front of us. Don't stop walking. In the midst of the obstacle, you may have to just take a step over it and say, you meant that for evil, but God meant it for good. You, you, dead devil, you may have thought that you're taking over my life and taking control, but I'm here to tell you today that I am made more than a conqueror through Christ who loved me. I'm going to be everything that Jesus wants me to be. Hallelujah. Oh. There is a door of opportunity. Can I just tell you, those of you that have been around long enough know I am not a manipulating pastor. I'm not trying to twist anybody's arms. I'm not telling you to go to hell if you're not going to do this. You're not going to. Here's what I'm saying is, why wouldn't you want to be a part of what God is doing? Because he's going to do it regardless of what you want to do. How do I know? Because it happened a couple times in scripture. Prophet refuses to talk. Donkey talks. 
people threatened to be silent. Jesus says, that's okay. There's some rocks that will cry out. One way or another, Jesus is going to get the glory. You're not choosing whether or not to be used. You're choosing whether or not to jump in the river of life and let the current take you wherever it takes you. You're, you're, the question today is not what can you do for God. The question is, is where do you want to find God doing something in you? It's not about what you can do because quite frankly, everything that we do is going to fall short. But when we step into the waters of the river of the Holy Ghost, as it begins to maneuver through our lives, there is something that comes out of us and through us by the power of the Holy Ghost that begins to transform those around us. I'm telling you, get ready for your prodigals to start coming back. And I'm not talking about putting their feet in the water, testing it. There's going to come a service where we're going to start singing and somebody's going to run through that vestibule and tear right down to this altar because God has been dealing with them all week and they know that they have a safe church where they can just get lost in the presence of God. I know there's going to be young people baptized in the power of the Holy Ghost. I know there's going to be some elders who thought it was all over and that they couldn't be used anymore because they turned 65 or 70 or even 80 years old. Listen, my friend, God used Moses to deliver the children of Israel at 80 years old. He can still use you. There is a moving and a shaking in the kingdom of God. And we are on the precipice of jumping into the depths like we've never jumped before. Can I tell you that this is going to take all of us can I tell you, it can't just come from the preachers. It can't just come from the leaders. It can't come just from the Sunday school teachers. Listen, it's got to come from our four-year-olds that are dancing around here, not even knowing what they're dancing about. But when they get in the presence of God, their feet can't stay still. I don't care if you think it's out of order. All I know is this. Suffer the little children to come unto me, for as such is the kingdom of heaven. God's going to do it to the youngest. He's going to do it to the oldest. He's going to do it to the one that can't hardly make it down the aisle. And he's going to do it to the one that will run around the aisles. God's going to do something in us, not just to bless us. This is not going to be about blessing. It's not going to be about miracles. It's going to be about mission. It's going to be about changing the world that's gotten used to living upside down and flipping it over to upside right. That's even a word. I'm just telling you, my heart is overflowing. My heart is, I, I got home last Sunday. I told my wife, I just about preached it all out. Didn't have a voice Sunday or Monday. Totally worn out. I have to laugh at some of you that are, have your blankets on today. <laughs> I thank God for Lee every Sunday. Because she is right with me. She's got that fan going. I don't want people to be over cold. I don't pay attention to the thermostat because I'm always warm. You can ask my family. If, if it's not 65 in our house, then it's, it's warm. And, and so I just ignore the thermostat. So it, talk to somebody like my wife or Rangers. They'll fix it if you're too cold. Or we'll get some more blankets, I guess. But because I'm always hot. So but what I'm trying to say is there's something that's strict. I know today, I honestly can't say this for all of my ministry. And I've been in the ministry since 1988. I don't know that I've ever felt it like this. But I can say it like the prophet said it today. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Now, I said all of that to excite you, to, to get you encouraged, to put something out there that says this is, but we're in prep mode. And so for the next few minutes, I need to be Sergeant Sanders. I'm asking Corporal Esparza to help me. 
I don't even know if those are the right ones. I just, I was going to say Corporal Clink, but I decided he's passing out these women. I need you to empty your purses. I need pens. I found four in my desk. My wife has stolen the rest of them. <laughs> or my mother-in-law or my son. Somebody has taken on them. No, I'm just kidding. But I just grabbed some pens that we can share. And, and because I'm, I'm just telling you, each step of the last couple weeks and the steps for the next several weeks. Now, I don't know how long all of the military, but I never was in the military. I'm thankful for the military, but I was never in the military. I don't know how long all the special ops boot camp kind of things are. All I know is God is taking us on about a 12 week journey and we're about four weeks in. And uh, he's preparing us. He is molding us. He is shaping us. And if you're new to Spirit of Grace Church, you're not here by accident. God is sending out an invitation. His own, and we're inviting you to come along and join. But God is asking you not to come and be part of Spirit of Grace, but will you become a part of the movement of God? Now, if you've got that paper, set it down next to you so you're not distracted for the next 10 seconds or 10 minutes. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. You're going to kind of get a picture of how my brain works, and that may be scary for some. But I have been thinking this week about this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. Can I just tell you, and I can't tell you this for sure because I've never been there. But I have a feeling that we have some members of Spirit of Grace Church that join us every Sunday in heaven. I just, this is just me reading between the lines. I'm not trying to establish a doctrine. I'm not trying to say anything crazy. But but just please, if the Bible says we're, we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. I just have a feeling that Gary and Lil have joined us every Sunday. Those of you that don't know who Gary and Lil is, they're the founding pastors of this church. I just have a feeling that they grab the lemon bars. <laughs> bring... She gets her nice recliner or her rocker, and he's got one of those porch beds that he was so famous for. And they've crawled up and they've said, okay, God, we're watching what you're doing. I have a feeling that they're joined by Granny Helen and Barb. I have a feeling that those that have gone on before, and some of you have your own saints in your life that have gone on before. My dad has been watching to see you. Yeah. Because you remember, so those of you that were here on my installation service in this church, do you remember who preached that? It was my dad. And do you remember the threats he gave me? In the middle of his preaching, he told this church, if Tim ever gets off the rails, I'll come for him myself. He's up there watching me. Listen, I know this is my crazy way of thinking, but part of the reason why I do the things the way I do is because I don't want to upset those three especially. And Granny Helen is the fourth. Some of you don't know Granny Helen. She was Granny when I came. She, she had been around for a while. And, and for those of you that are new, it's her Bible that we have placed under the footings of this building. It's wrapped in a prayer shawl and shrink wrap, and it's literally the foundation of this building. That's who Granny Helen is. And, and she walked into my office, the little green room back there, one day, and I thought, oh, my Lord. When actually, her grandkids came and said, Granny, Granny wants to talk to you. Oh, sure, I'll talk to her. I'll help her the church. Come on in. And she came in, and she had not a smile on her face. And she looked at me, and she says, I don't like what you've been preaching. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my God, I've only been here for six months. She paused, and then she says, but don't stop preaching it. Can I tell you, that conversation rings in my head almost on a weekly basis. 
I don't, sometimes you may not like what I preach, but if it's in the word, I've got to preach it. It's not me trying to step on your toes. If you're feeling uncomfortable, if you're doing what the oats have told me, walking into their living room, walking and messing with their life, it's not me doing it. God's trying to get somebody's attention. All I am is a mouthpiece for the word of the Lord. And this is what God is saying. I have got to get you prepared because you're not ready for what I want to do yet. And there's a whole cloud of witnesses that are waiting, that have heard the prophecies about this church, that have heard the prayers that have gone up from this church, from the leaders that have gone on and moved on. Listen, I've heard some of them that were before me, before my, it's not about Tim and Trish, it's about what God wants to do in this church in good heaven. And they're waiting to see when God does it. I know what's happening Boy, this will teach you to let her preach. <laughs> I remember the day. For those of you that don't know, when we started building this is when Gary had his cancer come up. And so at the beginning stages, I would go over to his house quite often. And I'd walk in with a big roll of plans. Because I wanted him to be as much a part of it as anybody else. And we put it out on his dining room table and he'd say, okay, this is where the kids are going to be. And oh my, you've totally changed the whole entry to the old sanctuary. Yeah, we've changed a whole lot. And it was about a couple of months before he had moved from his home in, in North Oaks area out to the one in Hudson. And we went and we began, and it's, I did what I always did. I wrapped up the plans and and those of you that know any architecture, they're not small. I just grabbed them all under my arm and I'm going to, to go and visit Gary. I'm going to show him the progress and show him what we're doing. And, and I've got pictures on my phone because I took pictures all the time. And, and I'm going to show him what's happening. And I walked into his room. And I'm getting ready to put the plans on the table. And he looks at me and he says, I don't need those today. I said, well, what do you mean? I just wanted to show you what we're, where we were going, what we're doing. I want you to be happy with it. He says, I've already seen it done. I said, what do you mean I've already seen it done? I've already seen the sanctuary. I've already seen faces that I don't recognize. I've already seen the spirit of God moving. I've already seen the education wing full of kids. I've already seen it. I don't need to see your plans anymore. God has taken me forward a few months and years. I've already, he's a witness that is standing around heaven, looking down and saying, what are you going to do now, spirit of grace? God is preparing you. So what are we supposed to do about it? And this next part was the point of my message. And I won't take a lot of time. But here it is. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down. That's the writer of Hebrews terminology. Trisha said let it go. Lay it down. Forget about it. Turn it over to him, especially the sin that so easily trips us up and let us run with endurance or patience the race that God has set before us. Here's how we do this, according to Hebrews. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. Listen, don't let your eyes waver to the religiosity of the day. Don't let your eyes wander from this ministry to that minute. All ministries are good, but find Jesus. Get to Jesus. He's the shepherd of your soul. He's the doorway to heaven. He's the doorway to the presence of God. Jesus is everything that you need. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Whatsoever you do in word or deed to all in the name of the Lord Jesus. To wit that God was in Christ Jesus. Reconciling the world unto himself. It's all about Jesus. I have been around too much in my life. I have become entangled in too much of my life that I've had to step out and start untying knots 
just to get back to Jesus. But the writer of Hebrews tells us the way you get rid of all the weight and all of the sin is you look to him. You look to him. You look to him. Listen, I have told you before and I will tell you again. I can only do what the Apostle Paul does. And I can tell you this. Follow me only as I follow Christ. But if I ever waver away from Jesus, you need to run from this place as fast as you can. But as for me and my house, I'm going to serve him. I'm going to love him. Even when it makes me a little uncomfortable. Even when I have to be a little bit patient. I'm looking unto Jesus. The Bible goes on to say the reason why we look to Jesus is because he is the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Pastor, I agree. <laughs> Pastor, I decided to come to church today. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> Jesus initiated in you. You responded. You may not even realized that Jesus was initiating something in you. But the Bible says he's the champion that initiates your faith and he perfects it. If he's the one that initiates it and he's the one that perfects it, why am I worried about what John Doe says? If he's the one that's ultimately in control, why do I have to control It is part of the preparation. Now, I, I, I told you that I was never in the military, but I have read about the military. I have talked to those. I went to Bible college where the Air Force base was in Dover. I've been around the base guys. I, I, I knew and I heard enough stories and I've read enough research and books to know that the number one thing in boot camp that a sergeant or a leader of the military is trying to accomplish in the cadet that's there, the candidate that's there, is to strip them of everything, is to tear them down as far as they can tear them down. Not to destroy them, but they understand, the military understands that you will not be a good soldier until you get rid of all of your agendas, all of the way you think it should be done, all of the things that you think should happen and strip you all the way down to where it's up to your commanding officer as to what should happen and how high you should jump and when you get up and when you go to bed and how good is a clean mattress and, and a, a bed that's made and, and it's one of the reasons I never went, I didn't like making my bed. <laughs> But they strip them down. All of the ego is gone. All of the bravado is gone. They can't hardly even think straight or see straight. And then all of a sudden when you just think that it's gotten to be too much. They start building them back up. But they're building them up with the tenets and the principles of what they want the soldier to be so that when their boot camp is over and they release the soldier to do his work, they are operating as one. They are operating in the unity of the military that they're a part of. And can I just tell you, it's the same principle in scripture. Jesus has stepped on the scene and he's trying to strip everything away to get us to where we're at the very bottom. Not to leave us there, but to begin to put some bricks back into place. To put some principles there. To put some ideas that are not ours, but his. So that when the culmination of this preparation time comes, 
that we aren't taking six months or a year to ramp up to what God has wanted to do. But when we graduate from this preparation time, we step into the graduation ceremony. And the very next step that we have is right into the battlefield. And we become conquerors in him. There's no place for ego. There's no place for personal agendas. Listen, I'll just even turn around so you don't think I'm talking. There's no place for pride. There's no place for hatred. There's no place for prejudice. There's no place for bias. There's no place for timidity. There's no place for a, 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 a bloated sense of who you think you are and what you think should happen. But here, here's what it is. It's Jesus. I'm looking to you only. I love that. <laughs> I want you to take that piece of paper. And we're just about done for today. We'll have the next training session next Sunday. Amen. Here's what I want you to do with that paper. I want you to begin to write on it the things that God exposed to you when Trish was speaking. That hidden thing that you haven't let go of yet. Maybe some of you have just thought you could control your anger and you pushed it down. And you've pushed it down. Listen, you can't be angry and do what God wants us to do. Because if you're angry and you try to do what God wants you to do, your anger is going to come out and it's going to spill over on the person that God is trying to affect. There is... Maybe some of you have some hatred that you didn't even realize was still there because of an abusive situation back in the day. And the wound has been reopened. And infection has set in. You haven't even realized it. Write that down on your paper. Maybe it's your spouse or your children. They're driving you nuts. Wouldn't be the first time, won't be the last. But you've got to give that thing to God. It's not about us, God. It's about you. Maybe it's your job situation. Maybe it's something that you've been addicted to. Maybe it is, maybe some of you are still holding on to shame. If you're holding on to shame, and maybe you don't even realize it, but God is revealing it to you right now that you're holding on to shame. The Bible says this, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power. The gospel will override and eliminate your shame. Does everybody have something written? Here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to fold this up nicely. So all of you perfectionists, I need you to crumple this up in a ball. Some of you old timers may have remembered something like this. We did this probably 10, 11 years ago. The Bible says this. Cast your cares on him because he cares for you. Now, too many people think that word cast is like casting a fishing rod where you just kind of lob it out there and hope that you get where it is. That's not, that's not what the word means. The, the word cast literally means to throw down. To throw down. To have a holy energy that says, I'm done with this. I'm giving it to you because you care for me. Yeah. 
Here's what I want us to do. Would you just stand in the presence of God? Here's what we're going to do. In the stillness and the silence. Not that you have to be silent. I don't want the music. I don't want the, you know, music kind of gets us going a little bit. I don't want this to be necessarily an emo emotion will come, but I don't want it to be an emotional thing. This is a, God, I recognize there's witnesses. I'm taking it off today. And, and, and I'm not just hanging it in the closet. I am casting it at your feet. And, and I'm going to take a step over here because I don't want any of your junk. I got enough of my own. But here's what I want you to do. I'm going to begin to pray. And as you feel released to do. I want you to step towards this altar and I want you to cast that thing you wrote down on the altar all around the pulpit. Just get it up there. Just don't throw it at me. Throw it over there. In Jesus' name. Jesus, right now, God, by the authority of your word, I am releasing this body in the preparation of the Holy Ghost. God, I am asking you to release us from the weight that so easily besets us and the sin that has tear, torn us down and kept us down. I'm asking you, God, that every one of these pieces of paper that are getting thrown on this altar is each person that is releasing to you the thing that has held them back. Lord, you have put us into a boot camp experience, and this is the way, Lord God, that we peel away the thing that's hindering us from being what we need to be in you, because God, we're hungry and thirsty, Lord Jesus, to become everything that you want us to become. Lord God, we are releasing it now in the presence of Almighty God. There is a release of the anointing power of Jesus right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I worship you, I worship you, I worship you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus. simple act. There has been a power that has been released, an anointing that has been released that's going to lead us into the next stage of what God has for us. There is something that is being liberated and freed up so that God can fill it with something that he wants to fill it with so that abuse is not going to be abuse anymore, but it's going to be a scar and a testimony. That addiction is not going to be an addiction anymore. It's going to be a testimony of victory. That thing that's hindered you, that has kept you back from what God wants, is now going to be the thing that catapults you. My God. him to pick up a problem. 
I set you up. <laughs> there you go. And I want you to notice something. It wasn't his that he was picking up. Here's what happens. The Bible said, cast your cares on him for he cares for you. It says nothing about picking them up. And the Bible says this because we like to misquote or misunderstand the scriptures from time to time. Okay, now here's here's what I, here's what I would say. I told Travis pick up five real quick. You want to know what I really appreciate? He did it right away. That's right. He did it right away. But you want to know what? I, I, and I was setting him up, and I did that because he loves me. <laughs> but but here's what happens: we go and we pick them back up. And here's the problem. He may have picked up Bradley's problem. And now that problem has become his. And he has taken it and stolen it away from God. We steal the problems back from God all the time. Because when you cast it, it's not like the fishing rod that has a line that goes out to where it lands. When you cast something, all of you let go of a piece of paper. And I know it's just a piece of paper, but it is symbolic of the thing that you need to be released from. And when you let it go, cut the string. Don't pick it back up. And don't pick up anybody else's either. It's the reason why I said I needed to move over here. Some of you got close. I don't know what you're thinking I don't have time for any of that. Right. Jesus does. Yes. Let him deal with it. But here's the scripture that we get mixed up all the time. It's Galatians chapter 5 verse number 2. The Bible says, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Can I tell you the burdens in that passage are not those. You've got to hear me. I'm just about that three minutes. Grab a hold of this thing. You see, bearing one another's burdens isn't taking on somebody else's shame. It's not taking on somebody else's guilt and saying, well, I know you're guilty. I'll just kind of help you hold that guilt up. That's not bearing one another's burdens. Here's what bearing one another's burdens is. Dave, I want to do what you're doing. Help me figure out how to do it and I'll help you. Randy, you're trying to be used of God. What can I do to come alongside and help you accomplish what God is doing in you? I want to fulfill the law of Christ because the law of Christ is the initiator and the perfecter of faith. The burdens that we bear, that we lift up on one another, is not all the junk. He wants us to release the junk. He wants us to help mold us and frame us. What can I do? Can I pray with you? Can I, can I minister with you? Can I come hand in hand with you? Can I march with you? Can I minister with you? Can I touch somebody's life with you? Ah, if God has called you to be an intercessor, what can I do to help you intercede? If God has called you to be an altar worker, what can I do to help you? Listen, if somebody has been called to the ministry of miracle signs and wonders, I've got to get people who need a miracle sign and wonder in the presence of the person that's being used. That is bearing up one another's burdens. And I'm telling you, my friend, this stuff, this stuff has got to be done. It's, it, it, it's God's. Well, my family's not right. Yeah? If it's there, it's in the right hands. Come on. I'm just... Uh, uh, my heart is so heavy right now. Because God is trying to get our attention. And some of us are still trying to live like we used to. Because we mess up the understanding of Scripture. Paul said, In whatsoever state I am, therewith I am content. If you're seeking happiness, you're missing the boat. 
because happiness will come and go. But contentment will carry you through. something that we learned a long time ago. My wife and I. Can I just tell you it's kind of fun stepping on all these. <laughs> hey, the Bible said if I tread on serpents, it's not going to hurt me. It says wherever I plant my feet, that's my territory. Might as well put it under my feet. Remove it from over my head. But we have prayed, God, when the time is right, you need to send us the right people. And God, whether they are in shambles when they come or whether they are totally and completely in tune with God when they come, just send them anyhow. Because God... We want people that are hungry and thirsty for what you're doing to come. But here's what I know. There's some people, there's some giftings that won't be accepted in every place. This church is a no judgment zone. And if it's of God, we want it. Whoa. If it's of God, we need it. And what you bring to the table is very important. And it may not be something that you think is dramatic. Maybe it's something that you actually think is mundane. But listen, my friend, if God has planted the seed in you, I need to have the oxygen that comes from that. When that plant begins to burst forth and begins to release all the things that, that I need, I've got to have it. And God has from time to time, and I don't have time to do it now, but since Christmas of 2008, when we stepped onto this property as your leader for the first time, when in that important transition point, God has always brought the right people to, to, to Spirit of Grace Church that would have had come six months earlier would not have fit in. They would have been a, they, they would have just been it would have been hard. But the timing of God was right. And, and I said all that to say this: God is still doing that. Right people at the right time in the right moment for the right season. It's the reason why I don't believe in accidents from heaven. I believe in acts from heaven. And I bring somebody to you for just a moment. The Lord has given her something that has confirmed this today. And I'm asking Jen Gilbert to come. Jen has been a part of this church a little over a month, I suppose, maybe a little bit longer than that. But God has brought her to this church for this season because she needed us and we needed her. And when God brings somebody that needs us and we need them, the union is impeccable. And, 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 and so I'm asking her to come and share what God has spoken to her today in Jesus. Hi. I came in shambles. So thank you, church. Um, just to confirm, this was written back in October. And it confirms so much of what even Paul and has been said. It is just the Lord brought it back to remembrance this week, and it's just been like fire in my bones, as you would say. My church, once on fire, has now grown cold. I am bringing her out of the ways of old. The pastors, the prophets, they must all repent. Though my mercy is great, I will not relent. I will turn every table before I am done. I will smash the platforms that have forgotten my son. No one is greater than the great I am. No song, no sermon, no marketing plan. You must let go of the church of old. That season is over, I am breaking the mold. The programs and platforms, words I never said. 
said, I am tossing Jezebel onto her bed. Come out of our church. Leave Egypt behind. You have been consecrated. You've been given my mind. So stop thinking worldly. Stop straddling the fence. I am coming with fire and recompense. For those who will yield and surrender to me, they will move in my spirit and house my glory. But those that refuse and stick to their ways will surely be judged by the ancient of days. So humble yourself and draw near to me. I will purify your heart and give you eyes to see. My kingdom is coming. Oh, will you take part? Will you be found worthy of carrying my heart? It's not about you and the gifts that you bring. It's about my son, Jesus, the true offering. Forget what's behind and look forward to me. I am the author and perfecter of me. Let go of the sin. Let go of the weight. Let my fire cleanse you before it's too late. For I am coming. I am coming soon. I am coming for my bride, says the bridegroom. She'll be wearing white without blemish, without spot. Will you be found awake and ready or not? There's no more time to waste all that you would hear. Look up, my beloved. For your redemption draweth near. Before, behold, I stand here knocking. Oh, will you let me in? Or will you stay imprisoned behind your wall of sin? For those that answer the door and allow me to come inside will remain with me forever to rule and reign at my side. For those that chose, choose to ignore me and stay hardened in my ways, they will see destruction. Terrible days. Oh, that you would listen and return back to me. Let go of the other lovers of pride and jealousy. My love is a consuming fire. It cannot be contained. It's burning even wilder now for those who know my name. Yes, I am the good shepherd. You have known me as the lamb. But the lion is the one that's coming, and I am roaring over the land. Oh, can you hear the rumbling? Oh, can you hear the sound? The lightning, the thunder, the earthquake, the shaking all around. Oh, yes, they are the birth pains, the groanings of the earth. Preparing the way for my glory as my sons arise in birth. The greatest move of my spirit, not containable by men. For it will surely crush those who do not know the great I am. Incline your ears to me this day. Take heed of the words I speak. My glory will be carried by the humble, the pure, the meek. Let go of all you think you know about what is to come. The only thing that you must know is I am the only one. I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way than me. So receive the love that's been bought with my blood. And forever you'll be free. Would you receive that worship right now? All across this congregation, Lord, I open myself to you. We open this church to you. We need you. We need you. We need you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. getting our attention.
we're not going to dismiss this service because this service is not going to end. We are going to step from this service into his service. And we are going to continue our preparation tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday because I want to be ready when the power of God Come on. I'm just telling you, I, I don't have any other words to say other than this it's going to be epic yes. and mind blowing